Good morning, welcome to Careful Carpenter Videos. Uh, we're on video episode 4 now, and um, I'm back here at the Syndicate again, same as in episode 3. Only this time I'm fishing opposite directly. The last time I was over in the one corner, fishing over this way. Over there. And today I'm uh, right at the uh, front entrance of the nice swim, because as I turned up this morning, the fish were rolling everywhere. Um, Hopefully you've watched episode 3, if not, go back and watch that first and then come back to this one as I'm on the same location. Uh, I got it this morning, quite a few fish crashing about, got here about half 5 in the morning. Yet again I'm on the uh, afternoon shift so I got a good early starting. Um, fishing both rods on halibut pellets, a little braided hook link and uh, a little bag of pellets over the top. So hopefully I can get a run out pretty quickly, I mean the fish were bubbling like everywhere this morning. Um, just a bit of information about the last video, I've had a bit of trouble now with my laptop, the laptop's broke and it's gone away for repair for the last 28 days, they said it could take, it's now been 10 days since this video has been made, so episode 3 hasn't been actually uploaded yet since I'm making episode 4, so episode 3 and 4 will go up pretty quickly and possibly 5 will go up at the same time depending on when I get my laptop back and if I'm really unlucky I'll get episode 6 done as well and then all 4 will get uploaded to YouTube, so as soon as I get my laptop back, connect to the internet and I'll get uploading. Um, so yeah, I haven't been able to edit at number three or four because I've lost my laptop, so I haven't got my editing little pieces. I mean, it don't take a lot, but as soon as I get it back, everything will be done, and hopefully up on YouTube as quick as possible. So yeah, hopefully I can get a run today. Hopefully catch a couple. As I say, I've never blanked on here on the last video, so I've never blanked when I've been here. Now I'm probably on about my eighth trip down. So hopefully I can get a bigger night or get one of the nicest surge out this bottom pool. So I'll come back to you in a bit. Right then. Uh, update for you. This session seems to be the complete opposite of my last session on this syndicate. Um, I haven't landed a fish yet, quite obviously, since I haven't shown you anything. I've had two line bites and that's about it. It's now half past seven. I've been fishing for an hour and a half now. Both on the halibut pellets, which seems to the only thing I could catch on last time. Um, plenty of fish bubbling in front of me, jumping around the lake. Just nothing wants to take at the minute. Fortunately, well, Unfortunately enough, I was deciding between fishing this swim and the fish the swim I fished last time, and there's a few fish rolling around over there. But I'm deciding not to move around, I just want to sit this one out today, see if I can produce off this peg. And it's a no brainer then, never fish this peg unless it really shows good signs. But there's a, another two lads over there fishing on wagglers. Um, I've seen one of them pull out two fish, only small roach, I think. None of the carp have come out yet, so. I can catch a calf, I'll be the first one to say catch one. Um, I'm going to give it, say, another 20 minutes and cut some meat up and put a meat on. I'm one of the rigs and hope for the best then. Just keep baiting up and hopefully the fish will come over or a bit of wind to blow into my face like last time. So I'll be back hopefully with some fish next time. Right then, I don't know if you can see from behind me lot, but <laughs> the imminence has happened and I've uh, moved peg to where I was fishing last week. Um, Someone's just politely come and told me that I'm actually fishing on the sable peg, which isn't actually much of a problem. But, oh, sorry, it isn't much of a problem. But his mate's actually disabled and he's going to be coming down within the next hour. So, he said he'll come to sit next to you if you don't mind. I was like, nah, ain't doing too well here anyway, so I don't mind moving. So, I'll have to swim open for them to, to try and enjoy. Don't want to stop anyone fishing, so, might as well let him go into there and see if he can put anything out. It'd be nice to watch him over here. But I've uh, come over to where I was fishing last week and had that barb and a few carp out. So hopefully I can get some carp out. I've got the uh, one rod now on the lunch meat and the other rod on the pellet. Just please going to get a run now I haven't while well, I've got another four or five hours left. So hopefully something will come out nice. So I'll be back hopefully with the fish. Right then, very, very tough morning this morning. Don't know what's going on lot. Can't seem to get them going. But I've been baiting up a margin spot. And uh, I've just literally dropped my rod in, uh, had a little pellet on it, slight line, because it's right in the margin. And two minutes later the rod has just absolutely zipped right off. Nicely hooked, picked to the rod, pulled it a bit, snapped. 15 pound main line and I've got snapped. Now, I've heard a few times the sturgeon normally comes out down this area, so I might have hooked the sturgeon because I've never heard my rod rip off so quick. Or it could have just been a big carp. It's pretty much hooking old stuff, but fortunately it snapped me. Oh well. It's only got the hook in its mouth, it's managed to lose all the lead behind it, which is good, as my rig is designed. But if I get snapped anywhere, then it's going to lose the um, lose the 
thingy above the lead, so oh well. I'll just put another rod back down there while I set my rod back up that just got snapped. Hopefully the rod rips off again down that corner. I'll be back to you soon hopefully. Well then, after just losing that one in the margin, I put my other rod in the margin and reduced this stunning five and a half pound common. Absolutely give it quite a nice fight, like didn't take much line but it didn't want to come in the net. It's absolutely stunning. Did a bit lively on the bank lot, so I'm just gonna drop it back. Well I'm chuffed with that. Finally managed to get a calf on the bank. Um, as I say, put the rod back down in the margin. Well, put my left hand rod on the right hand spot pod bit on. Put in the margin while I set my left hand rod. Literally just started trying to link me back on and off the rod zipped again, thinking I might be in the same fish, but I managed to hook into it and it didn't take much line off me but it held deep, which showing it wasn't a small two, three pound cut but and when it came up it was a stunning little mirror which managed to slip into the net quite easily after a couple of minutes. Um just to get it in the net after I got broke two minutes before that. Um, this fish didn't have a hook in his mouth, so it clearly wasn't the same fish. But uh, nonetheless, I haven't blanked now. I'm chuffed to get one on the bank. Uh, quite a few fish now bubbling by my feet and either side of me to the reeds. Like, so my right hand rod's back on the reeds on my right. And I've just baited up the left hand side. Going to give it half hour before putting a hook bait on there so I can build up some confidence. I flip my rod out there. The sun's really starting to come out now, so it might be time to get it. Well, I've got a service rig knocked up, so in the next hour or so, I might be putting a surface rig out and get. Try and get my first golf off the top. Get my first carp off the surface here. Um, still got a few hours left. Hopefully, get some more carp, but no pressure's off me now. I'm, I'm having blanks. So, let's hope to get some more. Right then. Uh, still no more action since I had that nice. Uh, oh no, sorry, I'm lying. I've had that carp out of the margin, and then about five minutes later, on my left hand rod, I've slipped uh, a little skimmer. Surprisingly. Uh, got it straight in, didn't even bother putting it for the camera. Like, just Put it straight back. It's only about half pound or something. Still nice to know that both rigs were working as that was the one that uh, got snapped up. So re rigged it, cast out, and pretty much quickly got the uh, skimmer. It's getting quite busy now on the lake. There's a, probably, I'll say, about eight swims taken up now. It's still developing slow. Um, the odd cart coming out here and there. There's two lads up on their double peg at the top, and they seem to be catching quite well. Uh, I'll go switch to them later and see how they're catching when I pack up. Um, other than that, my rods have been pretty much dead. Like no more noise. I've been got to keep baiting at the margin. Like I've moved out my rig because there's nothing going on in the margin. So keep putting a bit of pellet in. Hopefully I'll get some of there. Um, only the small fish are coming up to the surface for my baits. There's nothing small, nothing big rather coming up for the surface baits. So um, hopefully I'll pull some out soon. So. Well, I'm just had a screaming run as you just seen. Uh, ghost carp. I've seen it quite. It was on the rod for quite a long time. Um, give it quite a nice fight. I've seen it come to the top, probably about five or six pound. I think nothing major, but would have been nice to get it on the bank. And unfortunately, I got it close to the net. He's taken another right, run to the right. Held the tension on it like I normally do. Loose clutch. And all of a sudden, everything just popped out. And out come the lead, and it flew out. Hook was uh, everything was still attached. It just spat the hook. Even the pellet was still attached to the herring, which was quite amusing. But um, yeah, just lost that one. Ripping run on the right hand rod, which uh, it should be on that video. So yeah, hopefully another one will come by. I'll catch you in a bit. Well, the sun, well, the sun's really come out now. It's really, really warm. I'm actually standing under the tree next to my swim light just to get in a bit of shade. It's absolutely roasting. Um, unfortunately, now I'm on a four fish loss and one fish, well, two fish landed. Four carp loss, one carp landed. Um, yeah, I had that one obviously at the start which snapped me. Fair enough, it snapped me. Wasn't ready for that. Don't know what went wrong like, but um, then I landed the uh, common. Then I had the skimmer. Then on the right hand rod, I had a ghosty which I lost. And then um, about an hour ago on the right hand rod again, I think it was a mirror. I only seen a roll coming. It was a gold roll at the top, but not gold enough to be a gold north or anything. So I'm assuming that was a mirror. And as it went deep, everything just went loose and plodded along with my lead on the bottom of the water. So I thought, oh, it's got to be something to do with the rig on the right hand rod. But um, about 15, 20 minutes ago, my left hand rod shut off with a completely different, just basic, basic rig on, which is effective. And yeah, the fish has pulled out again on that. Now, I'm in two minds of, well, the only thing I can think that's wrong with it is the actual pellet that's on the hook, whether that's causing it to come loose or if it's blocking the hook point or something, the fish is barely hooked and the pellet's getting in the way, I just don't know. 
that I've used these rigs plenty of times with boilers and never had any problems like this, but as soon as I start using pellets, I'm having problems. The only other bait I can use on here is lunch meat that's working effectively, and lunch meat just doesn't want to play today. It only seems to be the pellets I can get to catch on. Um, everyone else around the lake is really struggling, so I'm fortunate enough to get the runs. I just can't keep on the hook, which is quite embarrassing, really. But I'm going to have to persevere. It's now coming at 12 o'clock. I've got another hour and a half. Yeah, I've got another hour and a half. And hopefully I'll pull another carp out by then actually hook it and land it. So let's see you soon. Right then, my apologies. Um, we're now back at my house. It's on the night of when I was last fishing. On the video, um, I must apologise for the uh, shabbiness of that video. I've uh, realised watching that video back at the start, the first couple of clips were a bit shaky. But um, I completely forgot to charge my camera after video episode 3, so I've done episode 3 and halfway through episode 4, the camera battery just died. Um, so I've just re watched back and caught up to where I got to. And uh, the last clip you have just seen is me catching a carp and giving it a quick flick at the uh, camera. Well, I'm going to have to explain that first. Um, some bloke was coming around the corner and uh, my right hand rod zipped off and this bloke's pulling a wheelbarrow for some reason and a load of stuff in the back when you don't really need a wheelbarrow on that lake. The carp was around the corner, you could at least carry it in two trips. But so I'm messing around with this carp and he's standing there watching. I landed it and it was a nice five, six pound mirror carp, nothing bigger than six pound I wouldn't have said. And he's uh, looked at it and he was like, oh yeah, that's very nice. And he's, uh, I've blocked off the bank pathway now in my landing net in my rod and I was just about to move it all for him and because uh, I couldn't really give a talk in front of the camera with it I'll just give it a quick shine with the camera then as I was shining for the camera you might have heard an alarm going off in the background well that was my left hand rod going off now so I quickly slipped back the mirror moved myself for the bloke and he gone on pass and uh, I picked up the left hand rod but it was only a little uh, roach like come across the surface and uh, I lost that so that's another one Another one lost for me, uh, but a bit later on than that, uh, I changed both my rods to meat after I caught that carp on meat, and I caught another skimmer on meat, and then I went and caught a lovely koi carp on meat. But as my camera died, I couldn't get the uh, koi on camera. It was my first orange koi I've had out of there, and I wanted to catch a koi out of there for a while. It's only about three pounds in size, but it's still nice to catch a koi. Um, hopefully, I'll catch one next time we go, and uh, get out on camera properly. Because I did have one with my phone, but as phones are, they're really bad for picture quality. So I'm quite ashamed of that. So I'll have to catch one especially for these videos. Um, secondly, I noticed I lot, lost a lot of fish on these pellets in episode 4 and episode 3. And I've uh, come up with a conclusion by doing a bit of research and talking to other anglers. It's, uh, well, because of um, I was speaking to somebody else and he said he was fishing sweet corn on a waggler. And he was balling out his ground bait, catching continuously on his uh, sweet corn. But as soon as he stopped balling out the ground bait and just cast out his hook bait, the fish were picking up and he kept having the hook balls. And this is all his sweet corn, the soft stuff. So uh, he reckons if you don't bait up enough, the fish obviously don't get confident around your hook bait and just keep picking the little things off the floor. So when they pick up my pellet, for instance, because there's only a little PVA bag mesh of uh, pellets on the floor, they're picking up very little. So as they're only picking it up in little bits, they picked up my hook and it's only sitting in the lip maybe so it's very easy for it to run off, get a bit of pressure and it's just ripping the bit of its skin which isn't good so uh, for future reference I'm going to be uh, catapulting quite a lot of pellet out there so there's a big bed and give that another round and uh, if I still lose fish on it then I've lost fish on pellet and um, until I come up with a new way of using pellet I'll be going back to meat as it seemed to reduce in the end this afternoon or not this morning which was a bit weird but yeah I had a decent day in the end after I figured out what was going wrong and the pellet was completely wrong. I had complete faith in my rigs, which I should have. So I've just got to try again with the pellet, putting more bait out there and hopefully get the fish more confident. Which to me makes sense because in the margin where I only caught the one fish on pellet, excuse me, which was that common carp in the uh, edge, I actually put quite a lot of pellet down there. So the carp obviously got in amongst it and got very confident and had it. So yeah, 